So today we're going to do an overview of DNA replication, transcription, and translation. Let's start with an outline of what's going on, and that can be explained using the central dogma. This just shows that we're starting with DNA, going to RNA, and finally making a protein. We'll come back to this. So starting with DNA replication. This is a process by which a cell doubles its DNA before division, which helps make sure that future generations will have the same genetic material as the parent cells. Let's say this is a prokaryotic cell. The DNA structure is a double-stranded polymer with two strands of nucleotides. They use hydrogen bonding to connect and make a helix. The nucleotides consist of a sugar, a phosphate, and a nitrogenous base. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, or thymine. They complement each other like this. The backbone of DNA here is made of phosphodiester bonds, and each strand is identified based on the hydroxyl group of the sugar, either 5' to 3' prime or 3' prime to 5' prime in direction. DNA replication is semi-conservative, which means that the strands will separate and each strand is then used as a template for the new strand to form on. Once separated, replication will occur in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, adding new nucleotides as it goes. But how does it do this? Well, it starts at the origin of replication, and continues on from there, showing the area being separated and replicated as the replication fork. Replication itself occurs because of the work of many enzymes. As the strands separate due to the initiator protein, DNA gyrase makes sure that the DNA that is not yet replicated does not supercoil. Helicase will actually do the unzipping of the strands to make the parent strands. Then single-stranded binding proteins come in to stabilize these parts. DNA polymerase comes in to catalyze the addition of new nucleotides to the 3' end for the new strand. Other proteins help hold the polymerase here to do its job. Both strands replicate at the same time, but one is continuous, the leading strand, while the other is not, the lagging strand. The leading strand is 3' prime to 5' prime, and new nucleotides are added to the 3' prime ends continuously. The lagging strand is 5' prime to 3' prime oriented and replicates in segments starting at each primer. Primers, which are short RNA sequences, are replaced on the parent strand by primase, another enzyme. Until a primer is present, the DNA polymerase cannot add nucleotides to the lagging strand. The segments made are called Okazaki fragments. DNA polymerase 3 adds these nucleotide sequences to fill these gaps repeatedly until everything is replicated. DNA polymerase 1 then replaces the primer RNA sequences with DNA nucleotides. DNA ligase comes in at this point to bind the fragments of new DNA nucleotides together. The final product is two identical copies of the DNA molecule. DNA replication varies with some organisms. In circular DNA, theta replication occurs. The process is similar, it still has an origin of replication and a replication fork, but the difference here is that the unwinding DNA forms what is called a replication bubble. It can have one or both points unwinding at the same time. If there are two replication forks, it is called bidirectional replication, and both sides will meet at the end. The end product is two circles, with one old strand and one new strand. Rolling circle replication occurs in some viruses. The replication begins with a cut in the circular DNA. This makes a 3' OH and a 5' phosphate. The replication begins at the 3' end, adding nucleotides to the inner circle and displacing the 5' cut piece. Cleavage releases the linear single strand and a double-stranded circular DNA. This linear strand can become a circle again and replicate, acting as a template, and the cycle can repeat. Linear eukaryotic replication occurs in multiple replication forks along the strand, at a slower rate than in bacteria. Replication takes place on both strands at each end of the bubble. The different replicons, or segments being replicated, run into each other and fuse to make new strands of double DNA. Next up is transcription or the process of writing down the genetic instructions to create a protein from DNA. The instructions are written as RNA, or ribonucleic acid. RNA is a polymer with nucleotides joined by phosphodiester bonds. The structure has a ribose sugar, phosphate, and a base. The RNA differs from DNA strands by using the base uracil instead of thymine to pair up with adenine. The role of RNA includes being the messenger between DNA sections and the outside world, or well, outside the nucleus, so that it can be translated into an actual protein. This type of RNA is called mRNA, and the process of going from DNA to mRNA is called transcription. So we have part of a DNA molecule, and it consists of part of a gene that will code for a protein. We create an RNA strand using the DNA in the nucleus as a template. To make the RNA strand, you need a promoter region, an RNA coding region, and a terminator. So you go through three stages, initiation, elongation, and termination. In initiation, transcription will begin at the start site, just beyond the promoter region. 
usually here. This base sequence is necessary to start. In bacteria, core RNA polymerase enzyme and a sigma factor will bind together to make a hollow enzyme, which will recognize the promoter region and bind to it. It forms an open complex that allows the RNA nucleotides to attach to the DNA template and start forming an unconnected RNA strand off of this parent strand. It goes 5' prime to 3', prime, and initiation is over when the sigma factor falls away and elongation continues the process. RNA polymerase moves down the DNA strand and the DNA is rewound up. It is terminated after the terminator sequence has been transcribed. This can be row-dependent or independent, depending on the organism. For row-dependent, a row protein will attach to the RNA strand at the row recognition site, and a loop will form between this and the termination sequence that will cause everything to stop. The row protein will move down the RNA polymerase, and the RNA strand will dissociate from the DNA parent strand. In eukaryotes, the process is similar. Initiation occurs and modifies the chromatin structure. There are different types of RNA polymerase that recognize different promoter sequences and use different mechanisms of termination that will release the RNA polymerase from the DNA strand and the RNA to come off. What is left after this process is this, an RNA single strand with a 5' guanine cap and a 3' poly A tail. These extra nucleotides make it easier for the mRNA to leave the nucleus and help protect it from other enzymes that are present. But before leaving the nucleus, the RNA has to get rid of the extra information that has nothing to do with making a protein, and this process is called RNA splicing. We first use SNRPs to signal the start and end of the splicing areas, and we then use spliceosomes to actually do the editing and take out the introns that don't express anything. This leaves the exons present, which will express everything needed to make a protein. Finally, we have translation or the process of reading the RNA and synthesizing the protein from this. There are 20 different amino acids that are used to make up proteins. These amino acids are linked by peptide bonds. These chains fold over to produce secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structures. To make these amino acid chains, we need ribosomes. They come from the rough endoplasmic reticulum in the cell and are constituted of protein and a different kind of RNA called ribosomal RNA. The RNA has binding sites that allow the mRNA just created in transcription to come in and interact with the tRNA, or transfer RNA. This third type of RNA basically translates the nucleotides into the amino acid language. The structure of the tRNA consists of an amino acid on the 3' end and a specific sequence of three nitrogenous bases on the other. They go together. From that point, it's just building the amino acid chains. The ribosome acts as a platform for which the mRNA flows through from the 5' end. Then the ribosome will read the mRNA three nitrogenous bases at a time. This is called a triplet codon. The ribosome finds the matching tRNA with the three bases, called the anticodon, that matches this codon. This tRNA brings with it whatever amino acid is also attached to the other end of the structure. The mRNA keeps sliding along the ribosome, and with each codon read, the new amino acid is connected with the previous amino acid and starts a polypeptide chain, which is the start of a protein. There are many ways to read this mRNA, however, because some amino acids have multiple codons that code for it, which is good because this accounts for a few errors that can occur when copying or transcribing the DNA. It could contain errors in the sequence but still come up with the same end product. The initiation and termination of the amino acid chain is determined by specific start and stop codons. Start codons include AUG, which codes for the amino acid methionine. Stop codons include UAA, UGA, and UAG. Looking back at our central dogma that we created in the beginning of this video, we can see that our process is now complete.